Okay, so this and the next three questions, it looks like they are uh, basically reading check question because it's asking for, you know, speed of light. So, you know, speed of light in vacuum. So, speed of light in vacuum is C or uh, 3.00. I think if I go one more, this is actually 2.997 <laughs> uh, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And in chapter one, section one, I think as a hint points out oh, or not, in section one, chapter one, um, we covered um, speed of light in matter. So speed of light in matter, we use we define index of refraction, which can be measured, and um, and we define it using the speed of light in the matter. So we can turn it around, solve this actually for speed of light in medium and say speed of light in medium is equal to speed of light in vacuum divided by index of refraction. So, so yeah, it's a then now matter of just plugging in the numbers. So um, I'm going to use Ofram Alpha. And one of the nice thing about Ofram Alpha is I can just uh, say speed of light and it'll look up the proper constant. The only thing that I will probably prob pro provide for myself is the index of refraction for water and glycerin. Sometimes the index of refraction can vary between sources and um, the textbook reference would be the one that I rely on. So, you know, for water, we would say, okay, this is the index of refraction. So um, using that, we say speed of light in water is a C or speed of light divided by this number. And we get um, that, okay, 10 to the 8 meters per second, that's this part here, so 2.249. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's do glycerin too. So glycerin was 1.473. We're going to use that instead of 1.333. And that, so that's going to be a smaller number. Uh, yeah, understood that. And... 2.035 uh, times 10 to the 8 and also so 2.035 2.035 yep yeah, so you know just kind of a reading check question it's not meant to be a difficult question let's look at the next one they are kind of all along the same theme what is the speed of light in air oh that is easy three i think a three will be graded as correct you can also do 2.997 um let me do three and see if that'll be graded as correct in crown glass, okay, I need the index of refraction in crown glass. Uh, there it is, 1.52. Um, and that actually, like a third digit, kind of indicates the variability between different kinds of glass and all that. Okay, speed of light divided by that, it's going to be some number smaller. It's going to be 2, fairly close to 2. Yeah, 1.97 times 10 to the 8, so 1.97. Uh, I think if I enter 2, it might be graded as incorrect is that will be off by more than 1%. So, yep. Yeah. And you can also say, you know, 2.997, or it can actually be wrong. You know, if you said 2.99, that would be wrong, but that's within 1% tolerance. So that would be great as correct. How did I code it? <laughs> uh, that actually it's, looks wrong. Uh, is that's more significant, more digits than there are actually. Uh, let me see. Uh, so speed of light. Yeah, so it's got some extra digits. That's not affecting how it grades. But I'm pretty sure some of those extra digits are wrong. Speed of light. Uh, yeah, it should end at uh, 997. Uh, and starting from here, it's actually wrong. So uh, let me just fix that uh, um, off uh, uh, recording. Uh, because that's definitely wrong. I don't know why he says that. Uh, so, so I'll go fix that. Um, uh, but like, I, we should be using exact value. Yeah, that's wrong. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah. let me just put this there. I, I'll fix that after the session. We got two more questions of this type. So let me just do that. Um, I don't know why to program that way. Did I program that? Yeah, I programmed it. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, next. Okay. Components of some computers communicate with each other through optical fibers, which has light going through. Oh, and they have this index of refraction. What time in nanoseconds is required? 
for a signal to travel that distance. Okay, so um, you know this is kind of calling you back to uh, physics 4a, where we learned, or even maybe before that, that uh, speed is described by distance per time. So in this question, I think we are given enough information to figure out the speed. We are being told the distance and being asked for time. So let's solve this for time. Time is distance divided by speed. And I'll do the rest uh, kind of in situ. I will do it in place. I'll write down the expression for speed as we go. Uh, it's going to be this expression. So let's just start out with the distance. Distance is 0 0.45 meters. And this is one of the reasons I like O from alpha. Uh, it can handle the unit. So I can just uh, type in the unit and kind of have it work out the unit to get nanoseconds at the end. Now divide by the speed, which will be speed of light, divided by n. Uh, um, so that will be uh, 1.7. Okay, I think that's everything. And if I want, I can specify in nanometers. So nanometers might be in one of the units it chooses on its own. If I say it this way, it's guaranteed to be in the answer that will get. You know, all of that in nanometers. So that is uh, uh, nanometers per speed of light. That's not what I want. Nanoseconds. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's why. <laughs> nanoseconds, not meters. Oh, uh, yeah, it's one of the ways you can tell. Oh, yeah, that's not fun. It's two nanoseconds. Okay, uh, yeah, 2.552 nanoseconds. 2.552 nanoseconds. And actually, speed of light is now um, kind of a limitation on how, uh, how, what the clock speed of uh, CPUs can be. Uh, so that's why there are multi core approaches now and that, all that. Okay, one more, one last question that's along the same line of kind of reading check dealing with the speed of light. Uh, that's here. So it says there was a ma major collision of an asteroid with the moon. Okay. Described by some monks as a red glow. Oh, wow. How long after the asteroid hit the moon, which is this way would the light first arrive on Earth? Uh, so it's the exact same calculation, I think. So uh, this time we are dealing with the speed of speed of light in vacuum. It's in space. Uh, we are still given the distance, 3.97 times that, kilometers away. So let's type it in. So we have 3.97 times, uh, let me enter scientific notation this way, E5, that's 3.97 times 10 to the 5 kilometers, divided by speed, uh, speed of light. Then it'll give me some time. It's going to be a fraction of a second, like some milliseconds. Or, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. Moon is like one light second away. <laughs> kind of far away. <laughs> to go around the Earth, that takes a millisecond. But 1.32, that's significant. 1.324 seconds. Like if you shoot laser light pulse at the moon, it'll take like a, close, a little over two seconds for you to receive the pulse back. Yeah, so that's the answer, hopefully. And yeah, yeah. So that's the last of those questions in this set. Um, Again, kind of easy uh, reading check questions. Um, you have to remember some of the stuff from mechanics. That's why mechanics is required for this class. Uh, uh, any other questions, please let me know. And uh, Oh, and now that we are in the part where that will get edited out, let me fix that. Uh, so there was, you know, this part, um, I, I don't mind it being in the Zoom recording. I'll be editing it out when I post to... Uh, uh, Oh, that's interesting. Use the index or refraction of air. Uh, yeah, I guess that's right. Um, that's not wrong. Yeah, let's leave it alone. Um, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's just leave it alone. Uh, so I guess for the question I didn't get to mention, the index or refraction of air is not exactly one, but it's fine. It's the kind of detail that's more of an Easter egg than anything. <laughs> it's, okay, so there's nothing to fix. Let me not fix. Let me not fix it. So 